Hello to all of my friends in the crypto garden. I am very excited to be putting this video together for you. Um, we've all been watching the Bitcoin price over the last uh, several months, really wondering where the heck is this thing going to go? Uh, we've all heard the buzz in the space, the predictions that we're going to uh, 200,000, 500,000, a million dollars in this market cycle. And I have been um, closely watching and investigating and learning all that I can to help make the best prediction possible uh, to help myself and hopefully you um, think about things in a clear, sober way that might be detached from the hype um, and can maybe give uh, new traders and experienced traders uh, some, some different things to think about. So I want to start here with this really zoomed out view of Bitcoin. Uh, for those of you that are following along in your own TradingView accounts, this is the BLX. This is the Brave New Coin Liquid Index. And it's one of the best uh, views of the historical price action of Bitcoin. So I have this on the logarithmic scale. So this is a logarithmic uh, view of the price of Bitcoin. And you can see I've marked out the previous uh, market cycle top. So here's uh, May 2011. Here we've got November of uh, 2013. We've got December 20, 2017. And here we are today, uh, May 8th, 2021. You'll also notice I have these green lines here. Uh, these are showing the halvings. Uh, this is when Bitcoin, by design, reduces the reward for mining by half so that the supply of Bitcoin is actually reduced over time, uh, making it a deflationary asset. And every time we've had a halving event, it has kicked off and then a bear market, and then an accumulation phase, and then another bull market, another bull or bear market. And so here we are, we've, we had a halving event in May of 2020, and we are in the midst of a bull market, really trying to predict where we're gonna go. Okay, so here's the high level view. Let's start talking about some of the particulars of what's happening now and where we think Bitcoin is likely to go next. So there's, there's a couple of things that I've been following closely here. Uh, one of the things I just want to point out is that historically, when we look left and see what Bitcoin has done in these previous bull runs, uh, one of the indicators that uh, we've always interacted with, I should say Bitcoin has always interacted with because I'm not going to pretend that I was here uh, analyzing charts in July 2017, but Bitcoin in July of 2017 was coming down and making contact with this 20 EMA. So this is a 20-day uh, exponential moving average that you can see kind of follows and supports the Bitcoin price. And in past bull runs, we've come down and we've made multiple contacts with the 20 EMA. And so far in this bull run, we have not. The last time we were at the 20 EMA and actually bounced off of it was in September of 2020. So for a while now, uh, I have felt like we're pretty high off the ground and there is that bottom that uh, we need to kind of come into contact with to really have that support for the leg up. So I just want to point that out that uh, unlike in past markets, we are still, even now, even with this recent correction, we've not yet made contact with that 20 EMA. Uh, another thing just to be aware of, uh, this is kind of, uh, I think this is really interesting, is if we look at the slow moving RSI, so this is the relative strength index. Normally when we're going into these bull markets, we have uh, kind of a, an ascending pattern. You can see this uh, high or low high, higher high, higher high as we reach our cycle top. And we've got this kind of upward channel. You can see the, the low, higher low, higher low until we reach the peak. And in this, uh, little event that we've had um, pretty much since our, our market kicked off. Let me zoom in a little bit. Let's see if we can see this a little bit better. So here's from uh, October of 2020. And you can see here on the slow moving RSI that this is kind of climbing. And then even though the price has still been going up, 
we've actually formed this bearish divergence where we are forming in the RSI a low, lower low, lower low, a high, lower high, lower high. Uh, and this really coincides with what I've pointed out in past videos as the um, really textbook Wyckoff distribution that happened in this current cycle. So uh, unlike previous cycles where we've had these really parabolic runs up, um, you can see here that this just really was this parabolic move to the upside and then a crash back down. In this cycle, we have had uh, what is, what is um, known as a Wyckoff distribution event. If I go to my BTC perp chart here, um, so this move that Bitcoin made, it's, it's something it's never really done before. Uh, to me, it really shows that the large uh, interests in the space are moving in a lot more of an executed fashion. Uh, this is essentially a campaign that is run by the predominant holders of the asset uh, to dissipate demand as they uh, exhaust their supply and really benefit the most from the holdings that they have. So this is an energy dissipating uh, pattern. And when I was first uh, being made aware of this and really digging into it, uh, it was right around here in the first uh, LPSY, the, the last point of supply. And my prediction at that point was that we were gonna have a lot more of a move to the downside. And I was surprised, quite frankly, that we really kind of had this uh, bounce off the 47,000 and continued uh, to the upside. But the fact remains that we have had in this market cycle this, this highly dissipative distribution that, that took a lot of the initial energy out of Bitcoin's sales. So if we look at this again from this view, again, we've got this kind of rounded top and that uh, is coinc coincident, coincident with this, um, you can see here really clearly on the daily, this bearish divergence as price action is going up, the RSI is going down in this uh, channel. Uh, one thing that I do want to point out though is that on the weekly, uh, I was noticing this um, in preparation for this video, is that even though we've had this uh, channel down and this big break, of the RSI, we've actually now turned direction and we are moving to the upside on the weekly uh, slow moving RSI, which, which is an indicator of a reversal and potentially another move to the upside. How strong that move is, is another question. But we do have another clue here. Another indicator that I've been watching uh, closely is the stochastic RSI. This is the RSI oscillator. It shows momentum. And we are very close to, and actually we have just made a cross on the weekly uh, stochastic RSI. And when the stochastic RSI crosses on the weekly time frame, it generally coincides with large movements to the upside. So if we look left, you can see the last time that this happened was all the way back in September, really kicking off this whole leg of the bull run. So in order for this to actually be a confirmed uh, power move to the upside, this cross needs to come back and enter into this purple zone. So we still need to keep an eye on this. This is not uh, confirmed, but looking at this um, downward trend in momentum, now a cross back up into this purple would be a very bullish thing for Bitcoin. And it could be a, a good indicator that we are moving back up. Okay, another thing that I want to take a look at here is another very interesting thing that has just happened. So uh, the Pi Cycle Top Indicator is an indicator that has uh, so far been very accurate in coinciding with the tops of the market. I say coincide because this has not actually predicted a market top. Uh, yet, I believe that this indicator actually was sort of retrofitted, uh, but it just happens to very, very accurately call the market cycle tops. And in this market cycle, we had a cross uh, back in April. And a lot of the um, people that I was following on YouTube and other places that were looking at this were 
you know, talking at the time, is this cause for concern? Is this the top? This seems really premature, uh, but there it was. And actually, uh, and very interestingly, if we zoom in and look at the present moment, we've had something happen that has never happened before in a Bitcoin bull run. And that is that we have actually uh, crossed and then crossed back so that in a sense, this uh, Pi cycle top indicator has been negated. And this is now showing that we are not, in fact, at our market top. So that's another, um, you know, pretty uh, exciting and, and strong uh, case for there being more upside ahead. But this is also a really good chart to look at to kind of see this uh, pattern that I've been talking about and how in past bull runs, we've had these parabolic moves before pretty large uh, crashes back down into the bear market. And this time, it's, you can see it almost like a rounding off of that, of that initial energy. So all of these kind of surge up, you know, they might have corrections on the way up, but we really have this uh, parabolic surge supported by the, the 20 EMA and then a crash back down. Uh, this time we've really got this rounding energy uh, is how it feels. And if you think about how you felt, uh, I bet in February as price was surging, you were pretty confident that this was going to 220, uh, that this was just going to the moon. And this whole purpose of a Wyckoff distribution is to really dissipate that energy. And so my, my only point in saying that is that uh, Bitcoin is really doing something that it's never done before. Uh, that's also verified by the Pi cycle um, crossing back down. Another indicator that is uh, really useful to look at, this is the Bitcoin rainbow pie chart. So you can see in previous cycles how, um, or in, at least in relation to previous cycles, we're only in this orange phase, which is that, you know, everyone's still wondering, is this a bubble? We're not quite to the FOMO. We're not quite to that place where we really should probably be selling and then the maximum bubble territory. So, uh, you know, an indicator like this tends to suggest that we have a lot more upside to go. And, um, you know, one of my favorite indicators here or my favorite models is the stock to flow model. And I wanna spend just a moment here because there are some interesting things uh, that I think uh, should be looked at. So, um, you know, the stock to flow model is not perfect. And if you actually extrapolate out this uh, model, it'll get to some pretty wacky predictions. Uh, by the time we get to like 2050, it's actually calling for a trillion dollar Bitcoin. So we know that there's some delta between this really nice prediction that it's done. And as we get farther along the stock to flow model, it actually starts to um, deteriorate. But what's really cool about the stock to flow model is it makes this really nice predictive, uh, this line in the middle, this red line, uh, predicting just based on the supply of the stock, um, or in this case, Bitcoin, how the price action will respond. And you can see these previous market cycles, uh, although they've um, varied, you know, there's been a lot of variance from the stock to flow model, it has stayed pretty close to this general uh, uptrend. Um, the thing that is really interesting to me, however, is that if we take this at face value and we look at um, just kind of the predictive power of stock to flow, one thing that is very interesting is that the variance from the price, the true price of Bitcoin uh, to the prediction of the model, that uh, stock to flow 365 day average, we've actually been getting less variance in each of these market cycles. So if you see how much variance we had here in 20, uh, 13, you know, the model was calling for a, you know, $200 Bitcoin about, and we were around a thousand dollar Bitcoin, but then it came kind of came back down and corrected. Uh, the next time we had a market cycle, the variance was less. See how this is, the red is getting closer and closer to this center line, less and less variance. And in this market, it's very interesting to me that even though we've surged up to $60,000, uh, the variance from this stock to flow prediction is much tighter. And so I do wonder if we aren't starting to attenuate uh, the, the wild kind of euphoric fluctuations away from this average and that in our um, immediate bull run, we might not see 
a huge parabolic mu move to the upside, we might see something a little bit more tight uh, to the stock to flow model. Um, the other thing that I want to point out here is that if we go back to the BLX, uh, you can see I've marked this orange channel again. Uh, and this is something that you can do on uh, charts, doing your own technical analysis. All this is really doing is it's taking this top and drawing a line from that to the next top. And that's kind of creating a channel on the top. And if I have the, the uh, low price and then the next low price, we can kind of create a channel. And it looks like even on this, I might need to just bring this down a little bit to kind of match what I'm seeing is a little bit more um, of, a, of a drop there. But, but this kind of gives us this uh, channel and this potential uh, you know, predictive model. This is what I based this uh, yellow box on that gives us really optimistic view. Uh, one thing that does um, concern me a little bit is that if we look at this from a logarithmic uh, regression, let me just turn off one of my indicators so I can have another. Let's turn on this logarithmic regression. Uh, if we look at this kind of a uh, view of the tops on the logarithmic scale, uh, this tends to indicate that we're a little bit closer to that ceiling than we may like to admit. And we can see this over here on this other uh, look into Bitcoin, where in this current market cycle, I don't know if I can zoom in on this, you know, we are looking at a potential of, you know, 115, 120 up into like, you know, 120,000. Uh, but not quite that same headroom if we're if we're listening to YouTubers and people that are calling for a you know five hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin in this market cycle. Uh, I think that the headroom might be getting narrower and narrower uh, as these market cycles progress. So you know I've actually recorded this video now a couple times because uh, this is a new channel, this is a new community, and I want to be really. Uh, positive and exciting. I don't want to just be a, a downer, but I also want to share with you kind of the, the sober, uh, realistic look at what the data is saying, aside from any narratives that might be happening uh, in social media. Um, and at the end of the day, I don't have a, a surefire answer. That's, that's actually why I'm excited to put this forth to the uh, Crypto Garden community and get some uh, more analysis and feedback. Uh, there are some very bullish things that are happening. Uh, the RSI, uh, stochastic RSI, potentially crossing here on this weekly time frame, um, seeing that uh, the, the reversal on the slow moving RSI uh, is also a good sign. But, but one thing I also want to point out is when we look at the Pi cycle cross um, for what it's worth, that uh, actually having the price fall a bit more and getting us down to that uh, 20 EMA is one of the best things that could happen for the overall health of Bitcoin and really building that strong base, that strong support for a leg up. Uh, if this were to fall, it would actually create more distance between this Pi cycle that has just crossed and crossed again. And so, um, you know, I have to I have to keep that in my own thinking that as much as I want Bitcoin to surge, if we really want to see the ultimate highs, we might be looking at more of a uh, 2013 kind of scenario where we had this initial peak and then a uh, an accumulation phase before the next leg up. So um, I hope all of this information just gives you uh, at least a bigger bird's eye picture of where we actually are and where we're likely to go. And it, I guess personally, uh, I don't wanna tell you, you know, what to do with your stacks or, or where to move it. I can only show you what I'm looking at and um, yeah, hopefully just give you a few more pieces of data uh, on which to base your decisions. I know that when you go to YouTube, when you go to uh, you know coffee with a friend, someone who might be really into crypto, the narrative is always going to be one of excitement and optimism. And I think for a lot of us in the crypto garden, you know, we are in it for the long haul. Uh, we want to be growing uh, our uh, our wealth and our investments in our community and each other. 
And so I think, um, yeah, that's the best thing that I can do is just present to you the information that is here present in front of us. And uh, yeah, so I lay that all on the altar of conversation. I can't wait to see uh, what you all have to say. Uh, just a quick recap again, you know, we have not made contact with this 20 EMA since uh, September. And one of the healthiest things we could do is to actually get a good solid bounce off of that and maybe even a little accumulation. We have this um, potential cross of the RSI oscillator, the momentum indicator. If this crosses back into the purple, it's a pretty good uh, indicator that we have a large move to the upside uh, imminent. Um, but we also have just kind of the reality that we had a energy dissipation event that is unlike anything we've seen in the past for Bitcoin. And we still need uh, a little bit more uh, in terms of volume, in terms of accumulation to build that cause for a really powerful move to the upside. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, please let me know in the comments uh, what you're thinking, feeling, and doing. And uh, I look forward to posting more uh, technical analysis for Bitcoin and other coins uh, in the near future. So from all of us in the Crypto Garden, until next time, cheers.